I've woken up near Matsumoto in Japan, and this is the view I found when I opened my curtains this morning. This little stream just rushing through the woods at the bottom there, though sadly not the best weather to go exploring. But a British woman isn't going to let a little bit of rain hurt her, so never mind that. I'm gonna go meet the others for breakfast and then we can plan our day. I'm now trying to find the lift, aha! I can't remember what floor the Western restaurant is on and we're having Western breakfast this morning. Tomorrow's Japanese breakfast and I think that might be challenging, even though Japanese food is amongst my favorite food in the world. I'm not sure about rice for breakfast. This isn't a bad way to start the day. Oh, and here's the Japanese version of the English breakfast. I must say that those mushrooms look like an improvement on the ones back at home. Are you ready for our big adventure today? Yes. I hope we won't have that much rain though. Breakfast was lovely, but I've run back to the room because I need to get changed. I just don't feel this is the right look for that weather. But I had my luggage sent on to this hotel from Kyoto, and because it hasn't arrived yet, that means I have to wear exactly the same thing I wore yesterday. In each of the bedrooms, they have these outer kimonos that can be borrowed for outdoor use. So, well, I guess it changes slightly from yesterday's pink jacket. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking the transparent umbrellas. We can still see Japan. We have arrived in Naraijuku, which is an ancient village of the Edo period. The Edo period in Japan basically ran from about the 17th to the 19th century, and Edo was the old name of Tokyo. This village, Naraijuku, is on the highway that ran between Edo, now Tokyo, and Kyoto, and it was exactly halfway between the two, just before the Tori Pass in the mountains that was known as the worst pass on the entire journey. So this village became quite famous because people would stay here to prepare to find the right weather to get across the pass. Do you think this is the right weather to be tackling this pass? Absolutely not. I think we're going to have to stay in the town for a bit. Let's find a local inn. Yes. And it's actually pretty lucky that we don't mind the rain because there's so few tourists and usually this place is full of tourists. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's so beautiful. As you can see, it's all wooden houses with the first floor, as, or as the Americans would say, second floor, yes. jutting out over the ground floor. So beautifully preserved. Now we're hoping that there's one or two houses that we'll be able to visit so that we can see what the interiors were like. The house that we stayed at in Kyoto also had these bars on the outside, and I thought it would feel oppressive, but it doesn't. It filters the light in the most beautiful way indoors and it makes you feel really safe and snug. This area was also known for its lacquerware so of course we're hoping we might find a lacquerware shop. Narejuku is known for its combs and its chopsticks and little wooden objects and this is one store that specializes in this. Oh the combs as well because you and I have already been thinking chopsticks. I know, I know, there are more here. There's combs, okay we're going to have a look. Oh so many. Look at the sign, it must mean combs made here. I definitely want to look at the lacquerware. So simple and so beautiful. Oh yes, coffee, that coffee does sound shop. good too, doesn't it? I'll have some matcha here. Oh, they've got matcha cakes. Cakes. Matcha cakes. cakes. Oh, well, that changes everything. It wants to be far too full to have any more food. Yes, and we meant it. Then, <laughs> things change quickly. Matcha cake is not food, it's a treat. Always room yeah, for a treat. It goes into the treat stomach. Mm -hmm. This is a heaven because I haven't been shopping at all in Japan other than pickles, which I think was a very wise choice. These are all beautiful. Konnichiwa. Philip, we're thinking of you so much here. Blast the sesame seeds of Japan. That must be the purest mountain water coming into the town. I wonder what this shop sells. Postcards. All these lovely birds. The police car is adorable. It's a strange mixture of vending machines and then these ancient buildings. You can just imagine wanting to get across that pass and continue on your journey and waiting for the misty mountains to clear. I was not expecting to see something like this in Japan. I was expecting big cities, thousands and thousands of people around me all the time. I couldn't have been more wrong. This is the Tezuka family residence, which was built in 1840, though the Tezuka family had been here for a very long time before that. They were in charge of the Toya, 
Because the shogunate during the Edo period it said that each of the post stations along this road and all of the major roads needed to have toyas. Now a toya is where they had laborers who were specifically to help with travel and of course horses. This town would have had 25 horses and 25 laborers, all of them overseen by the toya. And the horses and laborers were to help all travelers, not just common travelers. Of course, it was important for feudal lords and government ministers to be able to get through and know that there would be horses when they needed them. The Suzuka family lived in this town for over 400 years. And for 270 of those years, in fact, for the whole of the Edo period, they ran the Toya here. And I can show you where the horses would have come in. From that gateway, as you can see, there's just a rough dirt floor. That's where the horses would have come, along here. And then people could remove their shoes and walk up onto the tatami matted area. And as you see, even today, we need to remove our shoes coming into the houses. And in the middle of this area is where the cooking would have been done. And yes, my feet are cold. It has the most delightful internal courtyard, but also acts as a light well in the centre of the building. And then through here is the most wonderful room. It is an absolutely huge room. Look outside and we have snow. No wonder our feet are freezing. <laughs> <gasps> there is still snow on the ground. That's why we're freezing. It's not often. Socks, bare feet and snow. <laughs> I want to go and have a little look around here. What a heavenly place. Oh, look at that lantern. You can walk all around and look at the garden from here. The gardens here remind me quite a lot of the woods at Lalande. Granite boulders coming from the earth, beautiful trees, greenery, not flower-based at all. The emperor and empress of Japan actually stopped at this house whilst they were on their way between Kyoto and Tokyo on the 26th of June, 1880. And the room that they had lunch in has been kept exactly as it was on that day. And there they are. Now let's head upstairs. This, let's face it, extremely convenient cupboard slash staircase. And here we're in the room that would be overlooking the street at the front. This is the bit that juts out over the floor below. And there is no glass, which is actually quite surprising in a cold mountain town. But it's totally open to the elements. The only thing protecting the house and its inhabitants from the weather is the huge overhang of the roof. And here are the small upstairs rooms with privacy given by these paper screens, which just close across. These screens are also openable, and this is the window. But you can imagine that this paper insert wouldn't give you much protection from the cold, bearing in mind there's absolutely no glass or solid wall out there. This small room is what would be known as a six mat room, a six tatami mat room. These are the tatami mats, and as you can see, there are six of them filling the space. And because tatami mats were a standard size, rooms were described by how many tatami mats filled the space. Chairs were not used in Japan, so the tables are very low because everybody would just sit on the floor and eat at them from cushions. There's a simplicity and an elegance in the homes here. Now we've arrived at the Nakamura family residence and here we can see how craftspeople lived because Mr Nakamura was a craftsman who made lacquered combs. This is a great door, it's tiny. It was quite funny watching Michael try and fit through. You and I are slightly better at this one. <laughs> 
Ikichi Nakamura, the forefather of the Nakamura that lived here, is known as the founder of lacquered combs. He started making them around 1741. He made these beautiful combs, decorated them with lacquerware, and even in those days, people were buying them as souvenirs. The hair ornaments in Japan are breathtaking. Look at the delicacy of this resin decoration with cranes and flowers. It looks so exquisite in a beautiful hairstyle. As in the previous house, there is what's known as a doma, which is an earth floored room running all the way from the front to the back of the property. And then you step up from that earthen floor area onto the tatami mat area, which again has a kitchen in the very center of the house. This is a smaller house than the last one. So there are just two rooms on the first floor facing the road. There's no corridor area between them. These rooms were used as a workshop to apply the decorative lacquerware to the wooden combs. And this house is so important because it really does show exactly how a house of this period was used in the mid 19th century. It was used as an occasional inn for passing lords. It was used as a workshop. It was used as a warehouse and it was the home of the family who lived here. And on the wooden steps, there are still stains from the lacquerware that was used. You can imagine someone being very annoyed when they drop that bit. At the back of the house is the factory where the wooden combs themselves were made. So let's go and have a quick look in there. And there's all the different types of shape of comb that they made. It looks like there's three different doors. There's the paper door. Oh, two wow, with locks. With locks. Oh, they meant business. Well, that shows you how precious the yeah. things stored here would have been. And shutters. I think these shut as well, yes. yes. These also shut. Four doors. No one's coming in here. <laughs> I have to say, this is my favourite door of all, though. The front door. That is wonderful. And that one also has a lockable wooden door in front of it. So they would open up the, the things and you could see everything in the shop. Oh, how lovely. And then if the front room was a shop, the top room was the decorating. Yes, the back was making the combs. And the family lived in the other side of it. Yeah, they had everything they needed. Look at those oh, trees. Oh, good point. I told you they're single use with me. This is a spectacular tree in a rather grand house. I wonder who lived there. Looks as though there's a lot of lacquerware here. Let's pop in there. So many chopsticks to choose from. So you've got one pair so far? Uh, no, I think I have about 10. So you've been collecting them as you travel around? <laughs> oh, these are actually quite expensive. Oh, they are gorgeous with the inlay. Yes. Yes, they are beautiful. I think this is the part of the trip that Philip misses the most. Look at all these bowls. I know. At least they're not porcelain. Here you can see how the lacquer work is done. So there's a wooden bowl and then the layers of lacquer on top of that. I love the simplicity of the outside. Me too. The bling of the interior. Darker ones. Silver and gold. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yes, so. And I've fallen in love with these very, very simple black lacquer bowls. Gold on the interior because I think they'll go really well with one of the sets we've got at La Land. I find these jugs so elegant, but I'm trying to be good and not go back with too much luggage. Otherwise, I think I would just fill it with trays as well. We actually wondered this morning whether maybe we shouldn't come because of the terrible weather. I'm so glad we came. What's wonderful is that this town is not just a historic museum. It's a living town. People live here. Ah, there's Michael Potts. For some time I've been umbrella-less because he ran off with my umbrella. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, sir. I don't really know why I'm bothering using it now because I'm already soaked. I love these trees. They're so sculptural. I don't know what they are. Daisy? I'm in a vintage shop. Philip, I am missing you so much in a vintage shop. You would absolutely love this. We have found a little cafe and I feel that a hot cup of coffee or matcha is much needed. What's that one, Chris? Beautiful. So this is the uh, matcha cake. Mm. And you're That's having amazing. actual I'm matcha? Having the, the actual matcha in a beautiful bowl with another matcha cake. Oh, that does look good. And you've gone, well, truly local, vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Seriously, Michael? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Well, the coffee is beautifully served. 
those cups. Oh gosh. Apparently all of these things are 200 years old. So this is entirely served very special. on antiques and it's Zenzai sweet set. So it's all sweet treats. I, can't, I still can't believe I ordered this. This is some sort of rice cakes in a sweet bean soup. Interesting. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Look, I won't know if I don't try. It's worth it just to use lovely pretty things. Let's try a little bit of bean soup. Anyone else? Mm. Go for it. I'll try a little bit. Yeah. It's like the red bean. Yeah, I like it. I think beans are better sweet. Oh, yeah, that's actually drink. Yeah, it's yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I don't know how you eat that. It looks like much. This is how I'm... It's a sort of rice puff, actually. Michael's describing it as a giant rice crispy, but it's soft Very and good. slightly gooey on the inside. Really good. Mm. It's 200 years old. This was a comb shop. Beautiful place. They have beautiful antique sake cups in a display case here. The interiors of them are wonderful. I love this face. And there are some of those decorated combs. That was wonderful. This town is stunning. The tree in the background, it's just the most atmospheric village. There's the tree and the mountain in the mist rising up from behind the town. I quite weirdly like it in the rain, actually. Yeah, yeah I think the it's colours been... are brighter. Yes, and there are fewer people here. It is such magnificent weather that we just can't stop ourselves. We're going to carry on exploring, visiting the sites. So now in that lovely village, having seen the homes of craftsmen and local officials, we've gone to the other end of the scale and we've come to Matsumoto Castle, the oldest wooden castle in Japan. And let's see how the other half lived. The cherry blossom is struggling to come out because of course it's so much colder here than it was in Kyoto. You can see it's going to be spectacular very soon. The inner moat of this castle is still preserved because this castle is not one of the hilltop fortifications. It's a castle on the flat in the plains. And for those castles, the Japanese tended to have two moats, one inner and one outer. The inner one still exists. But the outer moat was turned into residential complexes all the way around. But there is talk of recreating it. What we see today is the keep of the castle. This was the main defensive part of the castle. And it's not where the Lord would have lived. There was a residence on this site, which was effectively the manor house. But unfortunately, it was burnt down in the 18th century and never rebuilt. Amazingly to me, this was built in the 16th century. So the same century that Lalande was built in. So as people were working on the Chateau de Lalande in France, others were working on building this magnificent castle here. It's amazing. And in fact, 150 years newer than Chris's castle of La Motte which is very, very old indeed. In the point of attack, I'd like to be in Lalande because I think it might be safer. Ah, but you'll see, actually, when we go inside, you see from here, it looks like a five-story building. Actually, it's a six-story building. There's a hidden story. I think it's on the third floor with no windows. So it was incredibly safe because attackers didn't even know it was there. And that's where the warriors would stay during any kind of attack situation. No. Does this remind you of anything? Small rectangular holes? We have exactly the same ones in the attic at Leland. And this is what they call here a teposama, which is a musket firing hole, exactly what it was at Leland. But because arrows were used so much later here, they also have yazama, and that's an arrow slit. So there are actually more arrow slits than there are musket holes in this building. There were no guns in Japan until the Europeans arrived, bringing guns in the 16th century. There is a fairly major difference in what the musketeers, the people holding the muskets, would have been wearing. This is certainly not the way they would have been dressed in France. It's so magnificent. It's made of interconnecting sheets of metal and it would have been used by the samurai responsible for musket use. And below the arrow slit, you can see what's called here an ishotoshi, and is just called a mashikuli in France, and which we also have. The attic juts out above the rest of the building, and it's so that attackers could throw down stones on anyone coming up from below. It's so that no one could scale the walls. 
Isn't it amazing to see these places that are totally different architectural styles built on other sides of the earth from one another, and yet they have the same defensive mechanisms. Now we've reached the hidden third floor that I was telling you about. And as you can see, on most sides, there are no windows at all. It is incredibly dark in here. There's just one area with a grill that lets in air and light. The fourth floor has an area that can be screened off with these thin bamboo partitions. And that shows just how important the person who would have used it was. Because as I said, this was not the residence of the Lord, but during any sort of battle situation, the Lord would move into this floor as his temporary residence. And this screen could divide the room into three separate areas, and the largest of which would have been his sitting room. From here, you get a good idea of just how enormous the moat is. It makes the moat at Lalande look like a puddle. This is the room at the top of the castle. And as we said in the previous buildings in the village, rooms are measured in size of how many tatami mats could be used to fill them. And this is a 16 tatami mat room. And during an attack, those tatami mats would have been put in here because this would have been the main room of the warlord who was overseeing the entire battle. From here, he would have had a 360 degree view of all of the attackers outside the castle. The perfect place from which to plan the defense strategy. But of course, castles are not in a continual state of war and they're still used during times of peace. This is the moon viewing room with openings to the north, east and south in which lords could come in the evening, contemplating nature and gazing at the moon. And I have to say, this is a pretty impressive idea. I'm beginning to wonder why we don't have a moon viewing room at Leland. I'm quite tempted to stay until this evening, but I'm pretty sure that the guards would notice us and evict us before it gets dark. We've arrived back at our hotel for our final night all together. And tonight we're having their French style food, so I'm very curious to see what that is like. Isn't it wonderful to see this on arrival? I have loved staying here up in the mountains. I feel as though I've seen a part of Japan that I never would have thought of if it hadn't been for Sonia and Chris telling me about this. We're back at the hotel, back into the kimonos, ready for dinner. And you've worn a kimono at this time as well. <laughs> The hotel provides kimonos to all of the guests, and I have to say, it's so relaxing. Mm. I think we should wear this all the time at home. I am wearing this. And it's beautiful. From now on, that's it. I am it. wearing this all the time from now on at home. You're rocking it. Oh, I like the little dance it inspires. Last night we had a sake pairing, and tonight we're having a wine pairing, but only with wines from this province of Japan. And starting with a sparkling Chardonnay. It's actually surprisingly good. And now we have shrimp with shintanamegi onion, which we think might be a, a spring onion. Apparently it stands for new onion. It's the first of the year and the sweetest. We have our own barrel in the winery. That barrel is actually antique because it's a stainless barrel. I think the flavor and the fruitiness of the, the wine is kept. So even the aroma of the wine, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, Marie, I want you to see this because this is a mochi, but made from potato. Think of the possibilities at La Lande. We thought that mochi meant the actual dessert that we all know and love, especially at La Lande. But apparently it means the texture, that sort of bounciness, the chewiness. That's mochi, so it can be used of something savoury. And we're having a Cabernet Franc Rosé, again, local. I think, frankly, the wines are surprisingly astounding. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely good. think so. It's Spanish mackerel. Spanish oh, mackerel. Amazing. Well, there's a few there that we don't have in the garden at La Lande. Yes. It's really exquisite. And another thing that's exquisite is this Chardonnay, which I think is the best wine yet. Oh, it's so good. It's amazing. It's really quite amazing. We're having a local Wagyu steak. I have never seen a honey dispenser like this before. I'm transfixed. It is. It's remarkable and three types of local Nagano cheese. Thank you so much, Chris and Sonia. Because of you two, we've had these wonderful experiences here that we wouldn't have had. It's so nice to Amazing. Have you. It's yeah. so nice to have you with us. Unbelievably, I think that their French meal was even better than the Japanese style meal we had last night. It was amazing. And when I got back to the room, I discovered that all along, there were pyjamas for me in the room that I hadn't noticed. So. 
I am having the evening in style in here and I'll probably have another little spa bath tonight. So I will see you tomorrow when I'll be going off by myself to Tokyo for my last day in Japan. And of course, I will take you with me and let's see what we discover there. And until then, Adam. Adonai.